Hey, Eric. Eric, wake up. What's this, Sarah? It's only 8 a.m. I'm still asleep. Today is the day to receive the interview results. Did you check it yet? I know, I did. How did it go? I failed, Sarah. I didn't make it. They eliminated me. What? That can't be right. You have all those degrees and qualifications? It can't be a failure. I can't believe it too, but there it goes. But after the interview, you said you had a successful interview and they liked you. Well, that day they talked and laughed with me very happily, so who would have thought they would reject me? It doesn't make sense. Holly got the job with one less degree than you. Holly? How am I supposed to know? Maybe they simply don't like me or my abilities are not suitable. That's not true. You are capable and very good. And I know that you have put in a lot of effort both in your studies and in preparing for the interview. Of course I have talent. However, sometimes the profession chooses the person. Maybe I'm just not destined for that company. It's normal. Maybe so. What a pity. What do you mean? So now you're regretting spending all that money for me to go to school, huh? So fish. What on earth are you saying? You are so petty, Sarah. When I start working and making money, I'll pay you back, okay? You don't have to worry about it. No, Eric. That's not it at all. I never regretted investing in your education. I believe in you and always have. I regret that despite all your efforts and study time, things didn't work out. You worked so hard and put in so much effort, but it's unfortunate that it didn't pay off. It's a pity. Hmm, indeed. I know you're feeling disappointed right now, but it's okay. If you're not destined for this company, you'll find another one. No need to be sad. There are many other opportunities. I always knew you'd succeed one day. Okay, I get it now. I'm just so frustrated. It's okay, Eric. We all face setbacks at one point. I believe in you. And I know you'll find another job. Thanks, Sarah. I'll keep searching. Don't worry about me. That's the spirit. Tonight's dinner will be a delicious meal made just the way you like it. You're amazing, Sarah. Thank you. We're in this together. Always. Hey, Sarah. Just checking in on how you're doing these days. Hi, Holly. I'm doing fine, thanks. And congratulations on getting into Company X. Oh, it was just luck. Thank you, anyway. Well, with your skills, who needs luck? Well, you're right. <laughs> oh, and something is exciting happening with you, too. Congratulations. What do you mean? It's Eric, duh. Eric got in as well. You must be so happy. Anyway, congratulations. What? He didn't make it. No, he did make it. But he told me he didn't make it. He told you that? Yeah, he told me this morning. Oh my God, so it is true. What's true? What are you talking about? Well, actually he got in with me. We're going to shop for office clothes this afternoon. What? Together? Why are you guys meeting to buy clothes? Well, if you're working at the same place and it's convenient for both of you, why not go together? I don't get it, Holly. Don't worry too much, Sarah. Everything will fall into place. There are always others who are more talented and nicer. Oh my god, Holly. 
What do you mean? I don't understand what you're saying. No need to overthink it, Sarah. Everything will be just fine. I gotta go now. It's lunchtime. Talk to you later. Wait, Holly, what's going on? Holly? Hey! Eric, where are you? Why haven't you come back yet? I'm out with friends and won't be back for dinner. No need to wait. What? I've cooked everything but you say you're not having dinner? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Oh, I forgot to mention it. Just go ahead and eat yourself. Unbelievable. Who are you out with? Let's not get into that. It's not something you need to know. I'm with my friend. That's all you need to know. How could you say that? It's normal for a girlfriend to ask her boyfriend about who he is hanging out with. We're a couple, aren't we? We are, but if we love each other, we should respect each other's own space. You need to respect my privacy. We're not married, so you can't force me to come home for dinner. What? I was just asking, but you said it like I forced you to go home. Like you're hiding something from me. Nonsense, I'm not hiding anything. Eric, you need to think of my feelings. I'm your girlfriend. I do respect our personal space, but things have been getting strange lately. It's been getting on my nerves. What nerve? Maybe you're overthinking it. Eric, I want you to be honest with me. What now, Sarah? I talked to Holly today, and she told me you also passed the interview. Why did you lie to me about it? It's not what you think. Oh? How so? Uh, I just wanted to surprise you. Then why haven't you told me yet? Well, I'm about to, but you found out first. Stop this nonsense and tell me the truth, Eric. Okay, okay. The truth is I didn't check the results properly and missed my name. I only found out when Holly texted me that I had passed. I meant to tell you, but forgot. Is that true? Of course. Hmm. But why did you text Holly? We were both interviewing at the same company, so naturally we'd discuss the results. Besides, we're going to be co-workers, so maintaining a good relationship is needed. Is a good relationship with a co-worker who was going out to buy clothes together? How did you know about that? You don't want me to know about it? I didn't say that. Why would my boyfriend go shopping for clothes with another girl? Especially my best friend. We're just co-workers. You're overthinking it. You two haven't become co-workers yet. And co-workers don't usually pick each other up. Calm down, Sarah. Let me explain. Today, Holly's car was broken. How could a man let a girl go alone in the sun? Plus, Holly is your best friend, so I just wanted to offer a helping hand. You can't leave someone in trouble without helping them, right? You're making a big deal out of nothing. You should trust me more. It's not about trust, Eric. It's about feeling left out and betrayed because you haven't told me anything. That's why I've been asking so many questions. Sarah, you're always overthinking things and then becoming suspicious. I trust you. I never asked you where you were going or what you were doing. And I hope you can trust me more. I admit I've been overthinking things and doubting you. I won't do that anymore. I'll trust you more. Good. I'm glad we've cleared up these misunderstandings. Now I'll head out again. You've been quite a bother today. Fine. I get it. What time will you be back? I'll let you know when I get home. For now, just go ahead and eat and get some rest. Okay. I hope you'll be back before midnight then.
Eric, where are you? What are you doing? Why haven't you come back yet? What do you want? Stop calling me. It's annoying. Why haven't you come home yet? It's 1 a.m. already. I've been trying to reach you, but you didn't answer my phone. Why didn't you pick it up? I'm not back yet, don't you see? I'll tell you when I get home. Didn't I say that earlier? We're not husband and wife. I don't have to report everything to you. I was just worried about you. I didn't expect you to speak to me like that. You should think about my feelings too. You don't need to worry about me. I'm an adult, not a child. When I'm done, I'll come home. Don't bother me. Fine, Eric. But one thing caught my attention. When I talked to Holly this afternoon, it seemed like she thought we had broken up. Did you tell Holly that we broke up? No, it's not like that. I didn't tell her anything. Holly must have misunderstood something. You don't need to pay attention to that. I find it hard to believe. Did you tell her that we broke up because you're having an affair with her behind my back? What nonsense are you talking about? Are you accusing me of having an affair? Why don't you trust me? I want to believe you, Eric. But lately, I can't lie to myself anymore. I'm not having an affair. It's the middle of the night and you're making baseless accusations. Go to sleep. I don't want to talk to you right now. Fine, Eric. You want proof? Here you go. This same afternoon, I saw you and Holly shopping for clothes. You two even held hands. And when you dropped her off, you kissed her. Holly wanted to pay for her clothes, but you insisted on buying them for her. How can you explain that? What the hell? Did you follow us? Is that the matter now? It's not like that. It didn't happen like that. You're just misunderstanding. How so? Tell me, what misunderstanding? You just need to calm down, Sarah. You did all that and tell me to calm down? I'll calm you down, Eric. The money I gave you earlier today is because you asked to buy a resume and some clothes for your job application. But you used that money to buy Holly clothes. I can't believe I trusted you. That's it. I want to break up. You know what, Sarah? You're right. There's no point in hiding it anymore. So now you're admitting it? Holly and I have been together for a long time. We arranged to work at the same company just to be with each other. You've been so blind not to see it. I've supported you all these years, sent you to college, and helped you earn a decent degree. And this is how you treat me? Was everything just a lie from the start? Well, Sarah, now I have a stable job with a good salary. How can you be worthy of me? Why didn't you tell me before that when you succeeded, you wouldn't treat me badly? Was that just a lie too? That was then. Things are different now. You should consider it a privilege that I've been with you for this long. Don't ask for more. I can't believe this. I've taken care of you all this time. And you treat me like this? Did you ever love me? Huh? Never have. Never will. Don't be delusional about yourself. You and Holly are both heartless bastards. We're done. Okay, but you need to leave the apartment. I don't want to live with you for another minute. I'll leave, but I haven't paid the rent for six months because I've supported you through college and everything. So you better remember to pay for it. The landlord will come looking for you if you don't. What? Are you crazy? Why do I have to pay? It's your apartment. You just kicked me out. If you do, You'll be responsible for the rent. No, I can't pay that. I don't have money. Take the money you gave Holly and pay it back. None of my business. I don't care anymore. Goodbye, Eric. Sarah! How are you doing, Sarah? How is single life? <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Oh, don't be so cold. We are best friends, aren't we? 
I'm just worried about you. You ruined my life and now you're pretending to be worried? You make me sick. Jeez, there's no need to be so harsh. I care, that's why I asked. Eric is very curious about your recent situation too. What do you want, homewrecker? Who are you calling a homewrecker? You are the homewrecker. You are the one who intervened in a love affair. I don't understand what Eric was thinking when he chose to live with you. What are you saying? I interfered with your love? You developed a habit of stealing other people's boyfriends, and that's why you're misunderstood. Just to remind you, homewrecker, you're the one who interfered with my love, you scoundrel. You're the one who doesn't know anything. Just shut up and listen. Before he knew you, he and I had a beautiful love. When you appeared, he only cared about you. This makes me very uncomfortable. You are both older and uglier than me. All you have is money. What the hell are you talking about? Still don't understand? Well, you are quite naive. So, let me be clear. Eric and I have been a couple since the beginning. Eric only knows you because you can support him and fund his education. Or more precisely, because of your money. <laughs> Eric agreed to be your lover solely to secure financial support for his college education. You've been oblivious for the past four years. <laughs> it can't be true. Even if you and Eric love each other now, don't make up stories to fool me like that. Why would I do that? I feel sorry for you being so gullible and unaware. So I'm just telling you the truth. Feeling so helpless? It must be a shock to discover that you're a home wrecker. This is what I want you to feel, Sarah. Why did you do that to me? We're close friends, right? We've been close since we were kids. Yet you did that to me? Why? Why? Because you're naive. You are too blinded by love and trust others too easily. And there's a bit of excitement too. You bastards won't live in peace. Haha, <laughs> we don't know what the future holds, but our current life is very good, thanks to you. Thanks to the money you provided for Eric, we are here today. <laughs> we also didn't disappoint you with today's achievements. I never expected to be deceived by two people I trusted the most. The two people I held dear. I always believed that you would support and assist me when I needed it. So I treated both of you well. However, you stabbed me deeply in the back. Life isn't always rosy. Blindly trusting others can lead to this outcome. It's rather pitiful, Sarah. How disgusting, Holly. You'll regret treating me like that. Whatever you say. Anyway, thank you for raising my lover and helping us succeed. <laughs> Don't let me see you again, Holly. Both of you bastards. Ha, huh. okay. Goodbye and I hope to never see you again, Sarah. Hello, Mr. Director. I'm Eric, the sales manager. I apologize for not being able to properly greet you on the day you arrived, as it happened to be my day off. It's nice to meet you, Eric. I was wondering if you like sushi. Coincidentally, there's an excellent sushi restaurant at the end of the street. Oh, I enjoy sushi. That's great. May I invite you to a meal so I can properly welcome you? There's no need to make it complicated. I appreciate the gesture. Just tell me what's on your mind. Mr. Director, you're quite perceptive. It comes with the job. I'd like to propose a promotion for someone who is talented but hasn't received the recognition they deserve. Oh? Who is that? That's Lisa from the marketing department. She's very capable, but the marketing manager oppresses her and doesn't recognize her. So that was the marketing manager's omission? That's right, he's a lazy guy and harasses female employees. 
I think allowing him to hold the position of department head will have a negative impact on our company's image. Oh? It's very considerate of you to think about the company. Of course, I'm a person of justice. I always try to bring justice to everyone. <laughs> You're quite humorous. I'm happy to be able to make you laugh, but did I say something funny? You don't feel embarrassed about lying. Shame on you. What are you talking about? You don't even know my name, do you? It was my mistake. I'd like to ask for your name, sir. My name is Sarah. Sarah? Impossible. What's wrong, Eric? Has the cat got your tongue? Is it really you? Who else would it be? Long time no see. But this is the new director's number. There's no way you're the director. You're definitely playing tricks. I don't have to pretend to fit in with you at all. It seems like you've been living a very happy and carefree life these past few years. I told you not to let me see you two again. But since we meet again, I will make you two pay the price. What are you talking about? I don't understand anything. Surely there is some confusion here. How can someone like you who didn't go to college be a director? You are so foolish that I tricked you before! <laughs> well, don't tell me you still love me. I didn't expect you to pretend to be a director to approach me. I hate girls like you the most. Tricks and schemes. Stop dreaming, I will never pay attention to you. You're good at choreographing your own performances. <laughs> Don't be so sentimental with yourself. On the list of new personnel, the director position was announced to have changed. Well, you were busy hanging out with Lisa at the time, so you wouldn't have known. The whole day we met again, you didn't even greet the new director. You took employee Lisa out to breakfast instead. Are you abusing your position too much? So is this really the director? How is it possible? You're just a country girl who dropped out of school. How can you be a director? Besides, how do you know all these things? What right do you have to ask me so much, Eric? You should pay attention to your own actions. However, since you're curious, I'll answer. Anything can happen in this world. It's like you pretended to be my lover so I could support you to go to college. How can there be such nonsense in the world? <laughs> However, it still happens. That's in the past. I'm just reminding you of your sins. And since that's an unbelievable story, why can't I become a director? But you didn't go to college. There is not only one path to success. University is one way, but there are many other ways. First is you have to rely on yourself, accumulate experience, and constantly learn. Second is you must have courage, the thing you don't have. <laughs> What do you mean I don't have it? I have knowledge. Yes, you have knowledge, but you don't have the skills or the courage to cope with difficulties. I think you should return to your employee position and start over. No way. You have no right to do so. Oh, I have the authorities to demote you, Eric. You can't demote me without a specific reason. Want a specific reason? Okay. What are you going to do? There's a list of your actions recorded here. What? Scolding subordinates, forcing subordinates to work overtime, overworking them, harassing female employees, frequently being absent without reason, firing employees who are against you, etc. These are some of your bad behaviors, Eric. You're abusing your position. Those are baseless accusations. I would never do those things. This is the report of your subordinates. They wrote a request to change the department head. And I believe what I see with my own eyes. Like the first day I came to the company, 
you were absent without any reason. In addition, the cameras also captured some scenes of you harassing and cursing your subordinates. Still deny it? That alone can't lead to my demotion. Did I say demotion? My fault. I mean you will be fired. Are you crazy? Why did you fire me? Watch your tone, Eric. I'm your superior. Do you dare use that tone with me? I I'm sorry. I didn't mean that, Director. However, just because of some of those behaviors, firing me is a bit unfair. You don't give anyone justice. But you demand justice for yourself? What a thick skin. However, everything has its reasons. You have stolen billions of dollars from the company over the past 10 years. What are you talking about? I don't know any amount. The evidence here is a recording between you and a woman planning to embezzle money from the company. Your plan is very meticulous and detailed, but it has all been recorded. No way, you're lying. Do you know whether I'm lying or not? Just check the accounting books a little, and we can find out who stole the money. That's not true. I didn't do that. Oh? You still deny it? That's a large amount of money. We must ask the police to help resolve it. What do you think, Eric? No, don't call the police. I admit, I'm the one who took that money. Good boy, Eric. You've learned how to admit your mistakes. Now return that money to the company. I can't. I don't have that much money. I already spent it all. Please spare me. That's not how it works, Eric. You stole money and refused to give it back but still expects forgiveness? I'm sorry, I know my mistake. I will quit my job at the company and will never appear in front of you again. Please, forgive me. But that's a lot of money, Eric. How can the company compensate for the loss you caused? When such a large amount of money is discovered, the police will definitely step in to investigate. And very soon they will discover that you are the mastermind, and you will eventually have to go to jail. <laughs> Wait, I'm not the mastermind. That's all I was demanded to do, please believe me. Oh, that's interesting. Go on. That's my ex. You know her too, it's Holly. Don't you both work for the same company? That was ten years ago. She and I worked together as employees, but she got greedy and invited me to come up with a plan to embezzle money from the company. I was blinded by money. Please, believe me, I had no intention of doing that. Keep going. One year later, Holly was fired from the company due to deceitful behavior at work. I dumped her right after, but she threatened me. She threatened to tell the whole company that I stole money from the company if I didn't continue to take money from the company and give it to her. I wanted to stop this evil thing, but the situation forced me. You understand, right? I understand that you were forced to steal money? That's right, and every month I have to transfer 80% of the money I got to her. I'm completely telling the truth, please believe me. I kept my transaction history as proof. Good, Eric. Please send it to me so I can help you. Okay, I'll send them all. I sent them all. Good job, Eric. So you'll help me get away with this, right? Oh, about that. Here's the thing, Eric. The police have taken over this case. Thanks to the evidence you've provided, perhaps your sentence will be reduced. <laughs> no, don't. I don't want to go to jail. Please, Sarah, help me. I'm sorry for everything. Please, I don't want to go to jail. Please. It's nice to hear you beg, but I don't have time for that right now. Good luck, Eric. Wait, don't, Sarah, don't leave me, please. Hey, Holly. Long time no see. Just checking in on you and seeing how you're doing these days. <laughs> what? Sarah? What do you want? Oh, it was nothing. Looks like you're living it up. 
going on cruises, buying new cars, and even renting a private plane. Of course, it's normal for me to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a day. I don't buy it. Why do you have so much money? Are you being supported by a sugar daddy? <laughs> it suits you very well. What? Never. I make my own money to support myself. I don't need anyone else. Is that true? So what are you doing now? Uh, I have a job at this company. What company? I heard you were fired from your previous company. Which company are you working for now with such a high salary? I work at a very prestigious company. An, an educated person like you wouldn't know about it. How could you reach that level? <laughs> you certainly weave a good story, Holly. Do you use your charm to deceive people like that? Oh, please. No matter how hard you try, you'll never be as good as me. No need to be sarcastic. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just stating the facts. By the way, have you heard the news? What news? About Eric. What happened to Eric? Don't you know? I thought you two were deeply in love. Turns out that no matter how beautiful love is, it can fade away. <laughs> Shut up, Sarah. I just dumped him because he was so stupid. So you haven't heard the news? Eric has been fired. I knew it. That useless guy couldn't do anything right. Don't you feel sorry for him? Why should I feel sorry? That useless guy should have been fired a long time ago. He's just a coward. What about the money taken from the company every month? What are you talking about? Don't talk nonsense. I don't understand what you mean. Why are you so nervous? I'm just saying that he was stealing money from the company every month too. What a scoundrel. Oh, that's right, a scoundrel. And he got arrested by the police. What? Arrested? It's funny how he kept begging and claiming he wasn't the mastermind. He said he has proof. Isn't that absurd, Holly? No way. That could be true. He must be lying. Oh? Why do you think that? He can point out the real mastermind. But he doesn't have any evidence to prove her guilt. Well, how do you know that? I'm just making an educated guess based on the information you provided. It's easy to infer. Hmm. I don't mind revealing that the mastermind is female. How did you know it was a her? I was just speaking casually. Quite a peculiar reason, mastermind. What are you talking about? You just confirmed it. It's just a random statement. It can't be used as evidence. Is that so? What about the transaction history and the statements of witnesses? It all matches the amount of money lost by the company. What nonsense are you talking about? I didn't do anything, and he willingly gave me the money. Why would he give money to someone who dumped him? Maybe because he still loves me? <laughs> You two certainly have a unique relationship. But enough with the lies. I have a recording of the conversation between the two of you. And the mastermind had a very detailed plan. Quite impressive. <laughs> no way. How did you get that recording? Who are you actually? Besides being a police officer, I'm also someone who has a deep grudge against you two. What? You're joking, right? 
A police officer? How can you be a police officer? You both asked the same question. It's kind of funny. Simply put, ten years is a long time, and I've changed for the better. No, this can't be happening. I don't believe you. Believe it or not, it's up to you. The police are on their way. We have collected enough evidence to convict you in court. Have a good time in jail, Holly. No, don't take me to jail. Please, Sarah, please forgive me. I told you I'll make you two pay. It's useless to beg. Goodbye, Holly. No, please don't do this to me. After embezzling such a significant sum of money over the course of ten years, it's only appropriate that the other two were apprehended and sent to prison. It's truly satisfying to witness deceitful individuals, or in simpler terms, bad people, face the consequences. <laughs> the truth is, I am neither a director nor a police officer. I merely sought revenge, and I spent a decade preparing for it. The results have been quite rewarding, given the effort I put in. At present, I work as a sales manager at Company X, having replaced that scoundrel Eric. This ending is rather gratifying as well. Life is peaceful when no one is attempting to harm you.